Welcome. So uh, I'm glad you're all here. Bright and bushy-eyed uh, uh, Saturday morning. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is improving uh, page builder user experience using layout paragraphs and single directory components. So if that's what you're interested, come on up. <laughs> I don't bite. You push the button, right? Yep, I push the button. It's red. So let me uh, kind of give an overview of what, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so this is not going to be a really technically deep dive. I'm going to give some technical pointers of things that I found really interesting and helpful. But basically, I'm going to be doing an overview of three Drupal modules that we used uh, to improve the page builder experience for our users. Uh, and that's single directory components, layout paragraphs. And then we also use the Drupal migrate module to actually move our existing paragraphs into this new uh, system. Uh, so uh, just a, a little bit about uh, myself. Uh, I've been doing web development for 28 years now. That's kind of scary. Uh, I spent several, seven years working on federal government contracts. Uh, and during that time, uh, led to mobile redesign projects uh, for two federal agencies in the Raleigh area, uh, the National Institute of Environmental Health Science and then the National Toxicology Program. For the last five years, I've been working with uh, the North Carolina Department of Information Technology. Uh, and to kind of give you a little information about that team and what it's accomplished, uh, this team, uh, called the Digital S Solutions Team, which uh, several of my coworkers are here. Yay! <laughs> uh, we developed in house an AWS hosted, now Drupal 10 uh, platform that hosts about 85 state agency websites. And we saved the state and the taxpayers a tremendous amount of money <laughs> because the cost of hosting all 85 of these websites is about, I think, what two or three of those agencies were paying individually uh, for their hosting. So this uh, platform was developed with minimal dependence on outside uh, vendors. Uh, in 2014 is when it, we started developing it. Uh, actually, I wasn't there at the time, but uh, they started with Drupal 7. And then in 2018, we started a migration process that took several years going to Drupal 8. That was a long and painful uh, process. I joined the team about that time very early on. And then uh, in 2022, we re actually redesigned the whole theme layer uh, for the Drupal platform, the nc.gov uh, redesign, uh, which I actually did a talk on that two years ago here, where we talked about how we used the Barrio sub-theme and uh, Bootstrap 5 uh, for that. So if you're interested, you can actually go check that out. So the problem that we were looking at is that we had these long scrolling forms for complex page layouts, which didn't really have uh, any good visual references for what you were editing on the page. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, and it was, so it was really hard to locate what you were editing. So so here, here's an example of a typical landing page on nc.gov. And if you go to the, the back end and you look at what this page looks like on the back end to try to edit, you are scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And like, where am I on the page? What was the particular item that I was trying to edit? It was really easy for the users to get lost. It was just a very uh, frustrating uh, user experience. So we had, uh, at the time, about 80 websites which were heavily invested in the paragraphs module. So we, we looked at a couple of options. Uh, we first considered Layout Builder because that's a part of core. Um, and it, it's, the support for Layout Builder is definitely growing. It's a, I think it's still a little bit behind where Paragraphs is, uh, uh, because Paragraphs started earlier. But the big issue for us is that we were already 
heavily invested in paragraphs, so that would have been an even bigger lift you know, to move it over to Layout Builder. We also looked at Gutenberg. Uh, you know, the big drawback of Gutenberg is that it really defeats the structured data model uh, for Drupal because it doesn't break out everything into individual fields. Uh, it's all jammed, you know, as, as I understand it, in one large text field. And so the last thing we looked at, which proved to be perfect uh, for us, was layout paragraphs. It was exactly what we needed. Now, I know we have experience builders coming, but, you know, so we were already in paragraphs, you know, and that's still a, a little ways out. So this was a really good solution that used paragraphs. Uh, but to make the paragraphs work, we had a couple of things that we needed to solve. We wanted a WYSIWYG, you know, editing experience of what you see, you know, exactly, uh, both on the front end and back end. But the problem is all the paragraph styles are on the front end theme. So we had to figure out a way to make sure those styles also could render on the admin theme so we could, when you're editing the page, you saw what you get. Enter the solution here was uh, single directory components. That was the first part of solving this problem. So to talk a little bit about single directory components, it's now a part of Drupal core as of 10.3. Uh, it requires Drupal 10 uh, to, for you to use single directory components. And in order to render it on both sides, you need to create the paragraphs in a module or the components in a module. So that way that module can be installed and then you can include it on separate themes. And so, uh, and then once you've actually created the components in a, in a custom module, then you can embed uh, those components in both themes just by including them on the paragraph templates with using a simple include statement. Now there's more information about this on uh, Project STC. <coughs> there's also a really good uh, quick start guide that they have that kind of just walks you. It's very well documented about how to create a component. And uh, at the end, I'll have a, uh, a link to a page on my website where I put a couple of uh, just reference links. So if you're interested in, in that, or you can just Google uh, SDC Quick Start, and you'll probably find that as well. So single directory components require a couple of things. Uh, the first thing that you have to have is a component YAML file, which really only needs about three lines of code in it. You need to have the schema, a machine name, and then a you know, human readable name. Pretty much everything else is optional that you can put in there. You can, you can define props, which are well-defined, like fields of data, if you want to reference that. Uh, you can also define slots, which are undefined fields of data, like subcomponents. And basically all of that is for an API contract if you want to yeah, do more advanced things. For what we were doing, that was all unnecessary. So really what you see here for an article card component was all we needed uh, to be able to render out the components. So you have the name. The key thing to know about components is that the name of the file has to be the same for every single uh, file in the directory. So it's all in one directory, in this case, article card. Uh, the name, article card, then is also used for each of the other files. So you have a twig file, which has all of your HTML markup. Uh, you have a CSS file, which contains all your styles. So all of your styles are you know, right there that's related to that. And then and optionally, if you need JavaScript, you can also put it in there. But again, the key thing is, you know, make sure the file name matches, and then it all magically, you know, it just finds uh, the appropriate files and renders out your component. So two other things we needed to do to make this work is that, uh, on the back end, we needed the grid layout, the grid styles. So in our case, we're using Bootstrap on the front end. So we just modified the admin theme to have, include the Bootstrap CDN. And what that gave us uh, uh, basically was your column layouts. So you could render that out on the back end. 
Uh, there were surprisingly few collisions between just pulling that those libraries into the back end theme and a few places we had to do some overwrite, you know, overwriting uh, some styles that you know messed up something. But for the most part it actually worked fairly seamlessly. And then the other thing that we needed to do is that you know that we needed to include or embed uh, each of these components into the respective paragraphs on the on the theme. So you know, basically, we have an include statement on the paragraph uh, twig file. Uh, the module name, in our case, it was NC components, a colon, and then the machine name for the uh, component or paragraph. And that includes everything into your theme. So we had to do that twice, you know, on the front end and the back end, but then we only have to we ever make any changes to any of the components. We just change it in one place in the module. So. Uh, that's the that was the component part that was actually fairly painless to implement. Uh, and so we had to switch over, I think, about 15 paragraphs and change them into components. So that that allowed us to pull you know all the paragraphs and all the themes. So the second part of the solution uh, was layout paragraphs. So the layout paragraphs module installs on top of the paragraphs module and works seamlessly with it. And what it does is it uh, creates a drag and drop interface. So, you know, the old paragraph editing experience, we have this long form like I showed you before. What it provides is now a, where you actually see each individual uh, component rendered or paragraph rendered out and you can actually have a drag and drop interface, which uh, I'll show you that at the end where you can move around the pieces, move them around to you know, different parts of the layout. You can actually change the number of columns in a particular uh, layout, which for our users was you know, a huge, <laughs> they were so very excited about that. Uh, and then uh, it also, the site admins can, this works on each a field. And in each field, you can actually choose on a particular field and a particular content type which paragraphs are available. So the admin can control, you know, in this particular layout, I only want these paragraphs and these particular layouts available. Uh, and this, this is Drupal 9 and 10 compatible. And I think as of this week, there's about 10,000 site installs using layout paragraphs. So the, the adoption of this has actually grown in the past year you know, since we decided to use it. So how do you install layout paragraphs? So the setup is actually really, really simple. The first thing you have to do, and I'll actually kind of walk through and demo this in a moment, is you have to create one new paragraph type called the section paragraph. You have to check a checkbox on that section paragraph saying that it is a layout paragraph layout section. And then you have to choose which sections are actually available uh, in that how many column layouts you want available. Uh, you have to go under the Manage Fields tab and you have to choose which paragraphs you want to be displayed in this particular field. And then you have to change the Manage Form Display and the Manage, uh, manage Display on that field. So let me kind of walk you through that. So the first thing you have to do is you go to your paragraph types and you say I want a new paragraph and I want this to be a section paragraph and I want this to use layout paragraphs. So again we're creating a new paragraph type. This is going to be just for the layouts so in that, I want to have one column, two column, and several three column layouts. So that's where you, you know, determine which layouts are available. So then under, uh, so that's creating the section paragraph. Now when we go under our section, uh, we'll see that uh, under paragraphs, we now have a section paragraph. 
So that's the first step. The second step is going under the landing page. So here in the landing page, we have a field paragraphs. So that's where all the paragraphs are getting added to the page. And then under here, so here we have all our different paragraphs. And you know, on this particular page, I don't want basic buttons to be available. I don't know why, but you know, I just, I don't, so I take that. But I do need to have sections available so that the layouts are available. So I save the settings. And then I go to the manage form display. Here, the paragraphs used to be at the paragraphs widget. I change that to layout paragraphs. And I save. Then I go under manage display. I change the format from rendered entity to layout paragraphs. And I hit save. Did I hit save? Yeah. All right. Now I have just installed and acted, activated layout paragraphs. That after, actually, obviously, you have to have paragraphs installed as a module, and you have to install layout paragraphs as a module. But once that's all installed, <coughs> that couple of minutes was all the setup that you basically need to activate it. Now, if you want to do custom layouts, uh, there are YAML files uh, that you can create in your theme you know, that define the layouts. I probably should have had a slide showing that. I forgot. <laughs> Um, but here, here's a landing page. Uh, here you can see layout paragraphs is, you know, on the page. And I'll show you a fully operational version of this fully operational Death Star at the end. Um, but that's uh, pretty, pretty simple, easy install. So the last, the thing that, taking the thousands of existing paragraphs that we already had, though, uh, that was probably the most complicated part of this, uh, this setup process. So our old structure back in 2018 when we created our landing pages, the way that we created the column layouts is that we had what we called band paragraphs. So we had a paragraph which had one paragraph had, for one column, which had a single paragraph field in it. Then we had two column bands, which had two paragraph fields in it, and so on. So we, the way this, our page structure was, we had the page node, we had these band paragraphs in the, node, in the field band, and then we had all these child paragraphs in each of the column fields. So we wanted to provide a seamless, transition for all of our users. So how are we going to change the structure from having basically child, we had child paragraphs, you know, parent paragraphs. And the way section paragraphs or layout paragraphs works is that you have, you have the field on the page and all of, you have your section paragraphs and then all of your component paragraphs all in the same field. So we had to find a way to migrate all these child paragraphs out of the parent paragraphs into that band field. And so the way that we did that is that we used the migrate module in Drupal. So here are a cool, couple of cool things that you can do with the migrate module. Um, how many people knew that you can actually use the migrate module to move data around inside the same site? So you can do that, <laughs> which made, our, made this actually work really well. Now, the key part of using uh, the migrate module to reference the same site is when a migrate, uh, when you're writing migration, there are three parts to it. You have uh, the source, the process, and then the destination. In the source part, you just have to set the key and the target to default. And what that means is it's referencing the same database uh, configuration that the site's using. Now, when you actually run the migration on the command line, it throws some errors. It's not happy about that. 
it'll say, it sometimes says, they, I can't find the database. But it works. <laughs> so, so even though it's, it's complaining, it, it, will, it will run and run the migration. So that's, that is the, the, the first part of the magic. Um, so then you write a source plugin, and here you know, the first step in our process was that we had to write a, a SQL query that went in and found all these old band paragraphs. So, so we queried uh, the, the field, band field, and said, give me all of the full width, two column, three column, and four column paragraphs. So it looked for those paragraph types in the database, the, pulled that out, all, all of those, and then created new section paragraphs, so then what layout paragraphs needs. So it, it just uh, created a new paragraph for every one of these old ones uh, that existed in the database. Now, there are three tables uh, in the database that are important to know about when you are dealing with paragraphs. So there is a paragraphs item uh, table, which all that really has, I think, is the ID uh, and the reference, uh, the revision ID, and there's something else. Most of the, the data is actually in the paragraphs item field data table. Uh, and that has uh, the type, the parent type, the parent field, the parent ID, and also, very importantly, it has this behavior settings uh, column, which that's going to be very important because that's where all of the information for layout paragraphs gets stored, all the relationships. So traditional paragraphs use the parent, um, field, uh, parent fields tables, columns, to tell you where that paragraph lives. But uh, layout paragraphs stores all that information here in the behavior settings. And then you also have a revisions uh, field data uh, table as well. Uh, that wasn't as important to us because once we created the new sections, we didn't actually create new paragraphs for all the existing paragraphs. What we actually did was we just updated the parent information and all of the existing paragraphs. So the revisions table wasn't as important because the, the revi latest revision is stored in the other tables uh, as well. So behavior settings. This is the key part of uh, layout paragraphs. Layout paragraphs needs this behavior settings field to store all the info uh, and it stores it in a serialized format. So if you're creating a section paragraph, it only needs one piece of information. And that is to tell that section what layout is it using. Is it using the one column, two column, three column layout? It's just storing the machine name there. The, the second part of this is if you're creating a component paragraph, you need two pieces of information. Uh, to be stored. What's the parent UUID you know, for that component? And what region or basically what column does it live in? So you're storing first, second, third column. Uh, so that way when layout paragraph assembles the pages, it you know, first finds the section and then it looks at all the other paragraphs that have that parent ID and says, okay, which, which of these has that section as the parent for it and which column does it live in and then it assembles the page. So the next step was writing the process plugins uh, which updated all these child paragraphs. So there was a process plugin that I wrote called set behavior settings which, and then you're also updating all the fields. Uh, and I've shortened it here uh, so that you can see it on the slide. But a uh, process plugin looks something like this, where it is, we're loading, we're feeding in the ID uh, from the previous migration 
of the section to say what's that parent ID, and then looking up to say, you know, what type was that paragraph? Was that a full width or two column or three column? And then we're doing a just matching it up to say, okay, now that full column now is a one column layout in layout paragraphs. And we're storing that in the behavior settings uh, where we're setting, and this here is creating a, uh, a section. So we're storing that layout. And then the most important thing is we're just using a serialize function to make sure that it's in the right format to store back in the database. Uh, and really what I did is I just went and looked at the paragraphs module to see how the paragraphs module was creating this stuff and just took that code and just re readapted it. So, so that was a, you know, an example of a simple process plugin. There was another process plugin that created the children paragraphs and that was uh, a bit more complicated. Um, the last uh, thing that's really interesting is that's good to know is when you're writing a migration in the destination, if you do not want to create new paragraphs, but you actually just want to upda update the existing ones, the two things you have to do, you have to make sure you match, you pa actually set the ID and the revision ID and match it here in the process instead of leaving that out so that it creates fresh ones. And the other thing to do is you set overwrite properties. And what the overwrite properties in the destination do is you set the fields that you want to update or overwrite. So, you know, in this case, we were just updating the, all the parent information. So changing that parent information from being another paragraph that used to be the parent to now it's living in the field of the node and the node is the parent, and we're passing in the node ID as, as now the parent ID at the migration. So, you know, that, and then we ran that migration, and that took all the child paragraphs and changed, you know, what their relationships were. And then there was one final migration that we had to write, uh, write which updated the landing page field itself and went and found all these new children uh, that had that ID for that landing page and some complex logic to say this is the order, the delta, <laughs> for all of those to make sure that they showed up in the proper order. And I thought that would probably be a little too much to try to get into here. <laughs> so, so that, after we ran those series of migrations and updated all that, the, the user experience went from being uh, these huge forms that you saw on the left, you know, to something that was very pretty and looked like that. And let me actually show you uh, what a so this is an example of uh, one of our paragraph pages. And so now this is now what our users are seeing. And so if you want to for example, I'll say, hey, I really like this. I want to create another one of these. And there we go. And as a matter of fact, now I really want this to be a three column layout. So I'm going to choose three columns. Wait for it. So now we have a three column layout, and in this three column layout, I now want to add, and my machine is running really slow. I'm not quite sure why. So here's a list of all of our components. Yeah, I want to just put in a text paragraph here. I can't 
that spell. <laughs> so, uh, but, oh, you know, actually, I want this band to be up here so I can drag that up to the, uh, trust me, it actually does that. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, I actually want this to be down here, and I want that text to be up here. Come on. You can see, I mean, you see how much easier, so much nicer this kind yeah. of experience is of, uh, you know, of modifying. I can see the whole page. Um, we actually even created a little, oops, wait a minute, I can't do that without saving the page. No, it's it, it if you want to preview it, come on, save. Is that something that can be automated on a schedule? Uh what in term, like Cron? In terms of data flowing into a particular field at a particular time? The migrations, you're talking about the migrations? No, I'm talking about just regular daily use of the site. Uh, interchanging information on the site on a regular basis. I haven't looked into that. That's a good question. I mean, we're our for our use case, our, our site users are primarily uh, it's all manual editing, yeah. content editing. So that's why I was just asking. Yeah, the main goal of this was to make a much better user experience right. for them. You know, so they could actually see, like, hey, I I want to. I think you can actually you can actually edit this on the front end because of one of the other modules we have installed. But you can go to the paragraph that you want to edit and and then when you click on the icon for that particular paragraph, it brings up the form for editing just that paragraph in a modal. Okay. So not sure if we we're doing what, what you were asking, but Yeah. <laughs> from a production perspective, being able to swap out data in particular areas on a schedule automatically so that you don't have to do anything. Yeah, to create paragraphs to do that on the fly mm -hmm. would probably, you'd probably have to write a custom module to do that. There's nothing in the layout paragraphs, I okay. think, that right. it doesn't have an API or anything that right. I think would allow you to do that. Yeah. Let me open up any other questions. Uh, can you set permissions? For example, they can edit content that they can drag, um, for example? I'm not sure about that. Do you guys know if we can do it? I know you can set, if you can edit or the pages, sections, yeah. for example, you, can, you, can, you can give permissions based on who can actually use layout paragraphs and edit it. Um, and there are, there is additional modules that you can install I think that has a higher degree of control about what you can add and not add in particular fields. Yeah, uh, the visual a, is nice, but it looks <coughs> yeah. more appealing for uh, customers to edit. Yeah. But I'm afraid that the dragging is a little bit too much power. Oh yeah, yeah. You <laughs> have you have you have to be careful. You have to know your your content editors. <laughs> we have, can I yeah. We have our permissions set by content type. And only landing pages have layout paragraphs, and only the upper levels of users are able to do layout or to do landing pages. So that, that helps a they have to be a more experienced user. But I still get in trouble sometimes with the driver. I think we have one type of editor. Yeah. Not like the government website, so it's typically one person that edits the website. Yeah. They if, can edit it, but I don't trust them with the driving yeah. adding sections. and. We we typically only have web managers. I think a lot of times they have that degree because you, you do have to be very careful about making sure people don't create ugly, yeah. terrible pages. Yeah, <laughs> and it, once you give them the so, power, uh, <laughs> so yeah, out of the box. yeah. yeah. Um, there is a layout paragraphs limit module, which does put limits of what you can put in to different layouts, so you can control on a layout by layout basis. 
and you can have different layouts for different fields. So there's a lot of control that you can put in that way. Um, is there other questions? Do they, do they nest pretty well? Yeah, they can nest. Uh, we're not really doing that, uh, um, but it does have the capability of, of nesting layouts within layouts. So you can do that. And you can simply do that. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is great. Once we migrated the data, it was seamless for our end users, which was really, really nice. Yeah. Did you have any difficult compromises going from original paragraphs to components, or did it all just happen easily? Well, I mean, there was some work involved <laughs> in converting things. Uh, I don't think there was any real compromises. In fact, I think we gained a lot more by being just one of the big uh, limitations of our old structure is because a band, each individual row of data or columns was its own paragraph. So you couldn't move child paragraphs from one band to another. You couldn't change the number of columns in a band because it was a fixed you know, paragraph type. So we actually gained a tremendous amount of yeah, from that. Well, and I think the way we rolled it out was pretty interesting too because we had so many sites that we were working on and so many agencies. We looked at those agencies that had the fewest number of landing pages so that we could kind of go in and see how it looked and make sure that every single one of those pages was on and we're doing it incrementally in different agencies as their number of landing pages grows. Yeah. Was... Yeah, I would say this is a great solution if you've already got a site that has hundreds, thousands of paragraphs already existing. If, if you were building from scratch and had the luxury of waiting, I'd probably wait to see what would happen with Experience Builder because they're probably going to take the best of everything <laughs> to create that. But that's still a year or two out uh, from where we're at. So. Sort of a general warning for people and question here. Your single record components are using strict typing in the component handle? Uh, I'm not sure. That's a good question. What, what? What? Can you elaborate a little bit on it? Yeah. So, okay. This is the chicken and egg problem. The single record problem. Question two: Are you on Drupal 10.3 or lower? I think we're on the latest. I think 10.3. 10.3 single record components are in core and no longer experimental, and yeah. the upgrade package is sketchy. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. So okay, <laughs> single record components are lovely. However, the component.yaml wants to enforce strict typing on the arguments you pass to your template. Hmm. This is probably for developers a great thing. PHP does this in all of our functions, et cetera, and if you use TypeScript or anything like that, strict typing is great. However, Drupal theme functions do not enforce the strict typing. And so you end up having to do a lot of type juggling, potentially, the theme pre-process layer. Okay. Because if you actually, I'll give you a simple example. And, but with paragraphs, you're probably fine because you're going to be writing custom single record components for all your paragraphs and you know exactly what to expect. Right. But if you try to make, say, a component for breadcrumbs, are you expecting to get a title as a string or as a translated markup object? Mm. That's the problem you run into. So the danger when we start talking about, hey, let's start using single directory components for lots of things, is you're, you're going to run into these type of smash problems. How do you, so I was just wondering if you ran into that. No, that's, that's a really good heads up on that. Uh, for what we were doing, we're just using the components in a page bill in the content area. And, and so it was very simple. So my general sort of note to people based on what we've experienced, this is the great use case for single directory components right now. Hey, we have a little ecosystem of render that we want absolute control of. But please, if you don't think you can write an entire theme out of single directory components because you will drive yourself insane. Uh, it's yeah. not really feasible until we solve this chicken and egg problem. Where does strict typing get for? I, I will also point out, by the way, because I have is your theme enforcing that? You can turn it off as a theme. Your okay. component YAML file can be empty, yeah. essentially. Um, otherwise, it's got to declare, oh, we're getting an object or we're getting an array. Hey. Yeah, so, uh, we, I didn't, uh, that 
when I read it initially, that was all optional, and it didn't seem like it affected anything when it, I... It, it, it certainly does if you enable it, but you know, your theme can, side note, themes can disable strict type checking at the component level. Okay. Modules that implement SDC cannot. Okay, that's, that's good to know. I think I saw another question back then. Yeah, are you using any uh, layout behaviors for any of the paragraphs that you're using? Like, they can be custom as well, or you just, if you want a specific spacing or something like that, you can actually pull that out too. No, we haven't worked. We basically just converted all our existing paragraphs over, which is a pretty straightforward lift and shift. Um, now that it's all built, we're probably going to be looking into doing a lot more tweaking and customizing of. So like when you went through the demo and you selected the columns and stuff, there would be additional <coughs> options if you pulled out more behaviors there. Okay. That's a good, there's a lot more that you can do. You know, we're, we wanted to get this out in sort of a minimum viable product form, and then now uh, we're going to be, I'm sure, doing a lot more with it. Yeah, the, um, same, the same people that build layout paragraphs actually build a editor. Okay, yes. Yeah, this is sort of an earlier version. I think they've moved on to, that's, thanks for mentioning that. If you're starting from scratch and you don't have existing, I would really look at Mercury Editor if, if you want to go with a paragraphs-based solution. But then again, layout paragraphs is, is catching up. And I think in core, in the big difference from what I understand, I haven't done a lot with layout uh, builder, but it's basically using blocks as bundles of fields instead of paragraphs as bundles of fields. So I think at the end of the day, it's probably similar, if not the same kind of functionality. Um, Anybody know more about the difference? I think there's actually a talk about the yeah, Builder a little bit later if I'm actually curious to go. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for, for coming today. Um, there is a, up on my website, colbank.com, the Drupal Camp 2024 has a couple of reference links if you're curious and if you have questions, you can email me uh, at mark at colbank.com. So. Thank you all for coming. Do we press the button?